Fun with History with Professor Banks, number 30 to 70s. Fun with History with Professor Banks, number 30 to 70s. Manageable parts. Skadir hood skadir skadir. Hello, and welcome to Fun with History. And I hope that you like that little introduction. That was the Swedish Chef from the Muppets. How many people here like the Muppets and the Swedish Chef? He's one of my favorites, and I tried to do a half decent impersonation of him, but. And I think I did a pretty good job. But that is the Swedish chef. And why did I have him start our lesson today? It's because our lesson is on the 70s. And the Swedish chef and the Muppet Show came into play in... Excuse me here, let me get my notes. Came into play in 1975. That's when he made his first appearance in the beloved show, The Muppet Show. Muppet Show was on air for years and years. It was a very big favorite. But that is our introduction today to the 70s. So, without further ado, let's get our music queued up and let's get into this lesson, shall we? And excuse me while I do a quick costume change as well. So here we go. We're doing a costume change, people. So just bear with me for a second. I'm taking off the apron, if I can get it untied. And we will get the music going. Why don't we just get the music going? to fun with history with Professor Banks. And I am still trying to get my apron off, so just bear with me here for a second. All right, there we go. And I might want to add, today I am sporting the 70s look here. So this is kind of the style of the 70s here, plaid. So, uh, that was in in the 70s plaid, so thus my plaid suit jacket. So, it's kind of a 70s thing.
Okay. Let's get this queued up here. There we go. There we go. And welcome to Fun with History with Professor Banks. And this is Fun with History. <coughs> and this week it's Fun with History number 30. It's called The 70s, or also known as, I've entitled it, The Me Decade. Okay, so that is a nickname that was given to the 70s, The Me Decade. So, The 70s, The Me Decade. So let's get into this and find out what we're all about here in the 70s. Uh, you know why it's called the Me Decade? I'll tell you right off the hip hop. It's called the Me Decade because I was born in it. Well, actually, that's not why it's called the Me Decade, but I want to point that out that um, it's a good reason for calling it the Me Decade because I was born in the 70s. Now, I'm not going to tell you what year I was born, but I was born in the 70s. And my wife was also born in the 70s. So we're all, we're both 70 child children. Um, so the 70s were what was happening when I was born. All right. So. And I must apologize. I don't have a joke of the week here. And. It's not that I don't have a joke, it's that I forgot to set my joke up before the, this recording took place. So, um, I can't think of any good jokes off the top of my head, um, other than, um, other than real old classics that, um, you probably have heard a million times. Have you heard of the dog that walked into the bar? Yeah, there was this dog that walked into the bar, bar and he was limping into the bar. And um, so he was limping, and um, he actually only had three legs. And uh, so he went into the bar, and the dog went up to the bartender, and he said, Look it, I'm looking for the man who shot my paw. <laughs> That's an old classic, but it is a joke. Um, have you heard of... This one, knock, knock, who's there? Orange, orange who? Knock, knock, who's there? Orange, orange who? Knock, knock, who's there? Orange, orange who? Orange, you glad I didn't say? Oh, I got this mixed up. Knock, knock, who's there? Banana, banana who? Aren't you glad I didn't say orange? It goes something like that. I'm sorry. I might have mixed that up. But anyway, that's all I got. That's all I got today, folks. I'll have better joke next week for sure. Okay. So, let us get into this. Um, so, I've got this outlined here for us. So, it's going to be a good one here. Um, so, the first thing I want to talk about is a new movement that starts up in the 70s. Okay, so a new movement to go to start. And, of course, let's do a quick review. What was happening in the 50s and especially in the 60s? Lots of movements on what front? Well, we had movements on, the obviously, the African black front, um, trying to establish equality with the whites in society. Then we started to see a feminist movement in the 60s, did we not? We started to see the beginning of a gay rights movement in the 60s. So these movements are not finished just because it's a new decade. They are still going on. But now we have a new um, movement called the environmental movement. Okay, environmental. So now we're starting to see a concern and care for the environment. So much so that... Um, so much so, people, that um, they have the first official Earth Day in 1970. And you may, you may know, right, that we have Earth Days quite often now. We have them every year, actually. Um, 
and they ask you to try to turn down the lights, try to turn down things that use energy for a certain amount of t period, just to try to recognize that in society. So we had our first official Earth Day in 1970. Then in 1972, Clean Air Act and Clean Water Act both passed through legislation. So those were big environmental movements. And also, to go along with this environmental movement, a character started appearing on Saturday mornings. A character. Um, anybody know what, who uh, this character is? Does anybody here remember watching cartoons in the 70s? Okay, there is this character named Woodsy Owl. And he started to appear on Saturday morning cartoons. Woodsy, Woodsy Owl. Ooh, 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 ooh. And he went something like this on Saturday morning cartoons. He was he appeared and he would go, Who, who, who? Give a who. Don't pollute. Who, who? Give a who. Don't pollute. Okay, Woodsy Owl. So that was a part of the environmental movement as well in the 70s. And he started appearing on Saturday morning cartoons. Okay. Now, the 70s, I want to make a comment about the 70s. Remember, we had the 50s, the fabulous 50s, right? They were fabulous because the economy was booming. Uh, the suburbs were booming. Uh, great prices on stuff. Lots of great stuff in the 50s, right? Then we get into the 60s. The 60s were not as great. 60s became very turbulent. And so now we get into the 70s and we're seeing a result of these turbulent 60s. And what's happening in the 70s is a general characteristic. The opposite of the 50s economy. So what's going on in the 70s is we got high inflation and high <laughs> unemployment. Okay? So that is what happens in the um, 70s. Lots of high inflation, lots of high unemployment. Okay, to characterize the 70s as well. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of go through what happens here in the 70s one by one here briefly. We have a global crisis that starts to surface its head in the 70s. And this crisis is a disease. And um, this disease is called Ebola. Okay, so... Anybody here, anybody here have ever heard of Ebola, okay? You hear it still even now in this day of age. But what happened was Ebola started to, to appear in the 70s. And it was a global crisis. This, this wasn't just the U.S. It was global. It started in Africa, started in actually a couple of places in Africa, specifically <laughs> South Sudan and Congo, and Ebola is a severe, often fatal virus. And this, and this Ebola outbreak affected hundreds of people. So it started in 1970. In fact, the specific year was 1976. We see that starting to happen in Africa, the Ebola crisis, okay? And it still is even an issue today. We still see Ebola, especially in many parts of Africa today, so it hasn't gone away in like three decades, but it started to actually be a factor in 1976. So that is a global crisis for you, okay, to look at. Okay. Now, pardon me, because I got to do another costume change soon. But I want to talk about, well, let me first talk to you about this man here. He was a big news story in the 70s, okay? Um, and the man I'm talking about is the President of the United States at the time, okay? The President during a lot of the 70s um, was, well, at least to begin the 70s, was U.S. President Richard Nixon. So he was the President of the United States. He came into office at the very end of the 60s. He came in in 1968. Okay, and so when he came in, Richard Nixon, first of all, Richard Nixon favored the interests of the middle class people. That was what he 
favored more than anything was the middle class people. So the lower class people weren't really seen as, um, weren't really favored too much by him. And neither were the higher end people, but the middle class people was what he was focusing on. So when he came into office, what he did was immediately abolished as many parts of Lyndon Johnson's war on poverty as he could. Okay, remember Lyndon Johnson, the war on poverty he was trying to fight, and he was also trying to fight the war on Vietnam as well. Remember that? Well, he was immediately trying to abolish many parts of that. And what he proposed was he proposed the Family Assistance Plan, so it guaranteed every family an income of 1600 a year. Well, this doesn't seem like a whole lot, right, in today's standards, but in today's money, that was about $10,000, so not too bad. So that was one thing that Richard Nixon did. And he also urged Congress to pass a comprehensive health insurance plan. So that was another big part of his, his platform, his mandate, Richard Nixon. But, okay, so he came into power with that mandate and with the, what, those things he wanted to do. But something happens, okay? Something happens, and Richard Nixon, eventually what happens with Richard Nixon is he becomes the first U.S. president ever to resign. And let me tell you why he resigned, okay? And as I said, I'm going to do a bit of a costume change here. Alert! 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 Scandal! 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 Alert! Water! Mmm, water. How many people here like water? Okay, so we have a scandal here with water. Okay. Before we go further, don't worry, there was nothing wrong with the water. The water is fine. We talked about the Clean Water Act that was passed, right? So no issues with the water. But this is Watergate scandal, okay? This is the scandal I'm referring to, okay? So um, let me get into this for you, shall I? And again, costume change here. Watergate scandal. Okay, Richard Nixon was a very paranoid and defensive man. And time, Richard Nixon is coming up for re-election again in the state. And that worried him. Because Richard Nixon was Republic. And he was really worried about the Democratic, um, the Democratic Repub the candidates. So, what happened... Excuse me, I'll take my hat off here. Oh. So what happened was, this was a big scandal because five burglars came into the um, office of the Democratic National Committee and 
why was it called Watergate? Because that was the name of the building it was located in, okay? So the Democratic National Committee headquarters were loca located in a building called the Watergate Office Building. Okay, so um, what happened was these five burglars from Nixon's own committee, okay? So they were part of Nixon's committee, and it was proven after the fact. So they went in to, broke into the Democratic National Committee office, and what they did was they took, they took photos of secret documents. They put wiretaps on the phones, and um, they are basically setting up wiretaps and taking photos to spy on the Democratic headquarters so that they could maybe get some inside information to help Richard Nixon become reelected. So, big scandal, okay? Obviously, right? You can't do that. You can't break into the other people's office and steal stuff and tap phones. That's You can't do that. So, actually, the first time they broke in, they weren't caught. But the second time they broke in, they broke in twice. Second time they broke in, they were caught and picked up by security guards. Um, so what happened was, basically, um, that there was a big investigation that started after this. Because they were like, you know what? Like, these guys, they, could, they knew what these guys were doing. But there was an investigation to determine whether Richard Nixon actually was part of this. Whether he ordered this. Whether he was in on this. Um, and they were getting information as well. They were getting some information to help them in their investigation from a, a, an anonymous source called Deep Throat at the time. Okay, that's all he went by. Didn't want to be named. It was all hush hush, right? Mission Impossible. That's why I played Mission Impossible kind of music. So, what happened was um, they investigated, and what ended up happening was. Um, a lot of people, Richard Nixon knew um, the spotlight he was in. Richard Nixon knew that he wasn't in a good spot. And so what happened was, basically, Richard Nixon was about to be impeached. Okay, so impeached means you're, you're thrown out as president. Like, bye-bye, you know, you, you did something you're not supposed to. So uh, before he had a chance to get impeached, he resigned. Okay, and then Gerald Ford took over as president, and actually, when he came in, Gerald Ford pardoned Nixon for his crimes. So Nixon got a full pardon from Gerald Ford, but the ones that actually broke into the Democratic National Committee headquarters in Watergate, they were all found guilty, and they all served jail time. So this was Watergate. Okay, a big thing that happened in the 70s, huge scandal, huge news, and as a result, new president that took over, and Richard Nixon became the first ever U.S. president to resign from his office. Okay, so that was Watergate. Yeah, let me get my hat back on here to finish the rest of this lesson. Okay, so Watergate. Um, now, I also want to make a reference that one of, another thing that Richard Nixon vowed to do is he vowed to end the Vietnam War. Now, Richard Nixon did not end the Vietnam War. In fact, what Richard Nixon did was he escalated the Vietnam War in his time in office. And this resulted in even more violence and more um, protests, and it got kind of ugly. In fact, so ugly, and I have to mention this for my aunt who lives in the States, my wife's aunt who lives in the States, she told me to mention it in my lesson. Kent State, Ohio campus had shootings on it because um, Richard Nixon invaded Cambodia after he said, nope, no more Vietnam War, we're ending it. But he, he, he um, invaded Cambodia, and Kent State students went on force on the campus to protest it. And what happened was um, a bunch, an 
unarmed college students were shot by the Ohio National Guard. It got really nasty, folks. It got, it, it wasn't very pretty. Four dead, nine injured. They were unarmed. They were just protesting what had happened. So, um, what happened from this was hundreds of universities, colleges, high schools closed due to a student strike of four million students. And more became mad at the Vietnam War as a result of um, this invasion into Cambodia. Okay, now let's carry on. Got a couple more things to talk about here. The oil crisis of 1973 was another thing that happened. What was the oil crisis of 1973? Okay, the oil crisis basically... This resulted from a war too. There was a Yom Kippur War, okay? And this war was between Israel and Syria and Egypt, okay? It was just a war that was going on between them. But what happened was the U.S. supported Israel in its conflict with Syria and Egypt. So after this Yom Kippur War, OPAC, which is Arab members of OPAC, or the oil kind of coalition, um, they put an oil embargo in because they were like, we want to punish those in the West that helped Israel. So that would include the USA, Japan, Canada, um, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom. Oil embargo. So what happened as a result of this oil embargo? Well, the prices of oil jumped huge. You, they jumped, and um, obviously there was a low oil supply as well. Now the U.S. was still able to get their hands on oil. It didn't really hurt them too much, but it hurt European countries um, quite a bit. And what happened as a result of this oil crisis was it went. Price of oil went up from three dollars U.S. per barrel to nearly twelve dollars per barrel globally at the end of it. And in 1973 to 74, there was a big stock market crash too because of this oil embargo and crisis of 1973. Okay, um, so I want to make a reference to that: the oil crisis of 1973. It is part of history, and it is something that kind of characterized the 70s. Um, now what happened uh, briefly at the as we came to the end of the 70s um, we had this happen and 1975 yay woo yeah woo 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 1975 there was an end to the Vietnam War finally so many people cheered and um, hooray for that because Vietnam War was getting tiring. It was a war that the U.S. was not winning. And so finally, an end to that war in 1975 to the delight of many Americans and people worldwide. August 16th, 1977 is a date that will go down in history forever because what happens in August 16th, 1977 was the king of rock and roll, the king of rock and roll, who came out in the 50s, Elvis Presley, was found dead in the bathroom of his house in Graceland. Um, now what they believe, although it's never been 100% proven, but they um, believe he died from a suspected probable overdose of prescription drugs. So it rocked the world big time. Elvis had a lot of followers, a lot of fans. And when this um, came across, it was very sad news. And it was uh, a hard pill to take. Uh, no pun intended on that. Um, so the king of rock and roll dead in 1977. Um... Let me look at some cool inventions for you briefly here, okay? Cool inventions. Over here on our very left, we have a tape. Yes, cassette tapes came into play in 1970 to 71. So we had cassette tapes um, that were invented. And they were pretty big for a while until they died and were taken over by a new technology. 
Um, sticky, 1974. And by that, I mean sticky notes. How many people here love sticky notes? How many people here have used those little things? Yeah. They were pre they're pretty cool. You can just stick them anywhere as little reminder notes. 1974. Then, first computer came out in 1971. And in 1975, we have our first VCR machine that comes out. The Beta VC VCR. Yes, good old Beta. How many people can... How many people cannot forget beta, right? I remember when I was younger, you used to go to a video store and you used to be able to be able to like, do we want this in beta or VHS? It was actually a choice at one point. And of course, the VHS took over beta and beta kind of went out the door eventually. But that was our first VCR in the 70s, okay? Uh, let me see here. So I think I've covered everything that I want to cover, but I want to leave you with this, okay, people? I want to leave you with this. This was the era of the 70s, okay? And one thing that characterizes the 70s in music was the era of disco. Yes, disco comes into play in 19, the 1970s. So... Um, I want to leave you with a little taste of disco, and I'm going to do a disco dance here for you, okay, to end out our lesson, okay? So, there was a group that came out in the 70s called the Bee Gees. How many people here have heard of the Bee Gees? Yeah, the Bee Gees, woohoo! Yeah, they were pretty popular in the 70s, disco, okay? And they had this song that even had actions to it. So I'm going to do this briefly for you to finish out this history lesson on the 70s, the me decade. So I hope that you've enjoyed this lesson and enjoy my fashion of the 70s as well. So here we go. This is a taste of the music to end out with, okay? Just give me a second here. Honey, I need to move it. Well, you can tell by the way I use my walk, I'm a woman's man, no time to talk. <laughs> Music loud and woman warm, I've been kicked around since I was born, and it's all right, I don't care, and you may look the other way. We can try to understand the New York Times effect on men, whether you're a brother or whether you're a mother, you're staying alive, staying alive. Feel the city breaking and everybody shaking, we're staying alive, staying alive. Ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. Ah, 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 staying alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, 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 Okay, so there you have it. A little taste of disco for you from the 70s. So I hope that you like that. As I said, this is fun with history. I try to make it fun for you and bring history alive, so to speak. So that was the 70s, okay? So I hope that you enjoyed that lesson. Um, that was kind of a taste of the 70s. Next week, we're going to get into a new decade, and that decade is the 80s. That's a great decade, too. Gotta love the 80s. But anyway, that's what I want to leave you with today. So, this has been Fun With History with Professor Banks. Take care until next week. This is Professor Banks signing off.